Hey guys, I got in here and started filling my little pots up with dirt and I thought, well, I should video this. <laughs> um, as you can see in the background, we got some grow lights with some seed starting heating pads under there. Uh, this is kind of our inside setup to get seeds germinated. Um, eventually, we'll move those guys out to the greenhouse. Um, but I'll show you what I've got here. What I what I start what we start our seeds with. We use these bottom pans. These right here will catch the water when you water. Well, we actually bottom water. We'll fill this up with water and let the soil absorb it and take it to the plant. And then on top of that, you put this one inside of this one. It's got these individual pockets here. And that is where these little cups will fit in that you have your seed in. That way they don't fall over and tip over. It supports them. Um, but anyway, this is great. Uh, I believe we got this from the Bootstrap Farmer. You can find all kinds of products there for seed starting. And this is where we got our supplies. Um, so yeah, what I did, if you'll see here, I've got this Jiffy seed starting mix. That's all that is. Got that at the store, got it at Walmart. Um, and what we do, since these little tiny bags tend to be quite expensive, we go ahead and fill half of our little pots with regular, just normal potting soil. And after that, then I'll fill these, fill these guys up with the starting mix. Because really you just need the starting mix to get your seed started. And when he germinates, becomes a plant, his roots will go down into this good dirt. This good dirt has all the nutrients that your plant's gonna need. So this stuff right here doesn't have that many nutrients in it. So that's kind of the plan. We're gonna see how it works. It's worked in the past, so I'm gonna go ahead and fill these up. Sometimes it helps just to go ahead and water or wet your um, seed starting mix. That way it can already be wet. We don't have to water it. That's actually a good thing because these seeds are tiny. You don't really want to water it from the top with your seeds because you may displace your seeds. This is the uh, we're getting really close to our frost, our last frost date, which is March 29th here in Arkansas, um, in our region anyway. We're in the northeast region. Um, so March 29th is our last frost date, so I'm just starting my seeds uh, according to that frost date, that last frost date. So basically what I mean by that is just um, on the back of your seed packets, it'll tell you, you know, start indoors six to 10 weeks before your last frost. Y'all see that down there? It says the heat mat helps to warm the soil and speed that germination process. So that's what I'm doing today. Even though it's cold outside, we just had a, some, freezing rain and sleep uh, last night well it kind of started around lunch yesterday um, and so even though it's cold and freezing we're going to go ahead and start these guys inside that way by the time it's warm outside we can just stick these guys in the ground um, like I was saying earlier we will start our seeds indoors, put them over here underneath the grow lots and on the heat mats. 
And once they become a good sized plant, we'll move them out to the greenhouse. Um, that'll just make more room to start more seed. So, get this last cut field here. All right, so, like I was saying before, our, fro our last frost date's coming up, March 29th. Today is February 24th. Um, so we're right in that four to six week frame there, time frame. Um, now, when March 29th comes, that doesn't mean I'm gonna go stick all my plants out in the ground, because it may still be pretty cold out there. Uh, some of these guys need it to be pretty warm. So we probably will not actually put plants that we germinated in the ground or store-bought uh, till like mid to late April. So it just depends on the weather. You know, you got to make sure you don't have no cold snaps. And the weather around here, we can have 60, 70 degree weather and tomorrow <laughs> have an ice storm. So you never know. All right, guys. Um, I'm going to go ahead and start these orange hat tomatoes. They're a dwarf tomato. Um, these guys I'm actually going to put in my green stalk since they're just a small plant. So I'm going to put these in my green stalk planters and see how they do this year. I kind of bought quite a few like micro um, dwarf varieties so I can. Um, uh, grow them in the green stock planter, see how they do. All right, so I've never grown these before, so I'm checking the back here. It says the extra dwarf bush plants grow just six to nine inches tall and produce oodles, <laughs> oodles of tiny orange orbs bursting with fruity sweetness. Perfect for growing indoors or on the patio as, or as an edible ornamental in beds, borders, or mixed containers. So it's perfect for what we want it for. Um, these guys should sprout in 7 to 14 days and you only uh, see uh, you only plant them an eighth of an inch deep so basically that tells me just lay them right there on top of the soil and <laughs> just tap it in <laughs> so that's what we're gonna do and apparently these little guys are precious because they only gave me like 10 seeds in here so we're literally going to put one seed per, per pot and see what happens because um, I just bought these, these this year. So their germination rate should be quite well. You see that? I see a little seed in this glue. Y'all, I'm going to grab him because <laughs> with only 10 seeds, we need him. So I'm just literally going to put him right there on top of that soil. And there definitely looks to be way more than 10 seeds. <laughs> I mean, yeah, it would be good and there's still some in here. Maybe that just means the minimal, maybe? I don't know. Well, maybe we could put two seeds in a pot then because that'll give it, that'll increase our risk or our chances for germination. I'm literally just laying these little tiny seeds right on top of the soil here. And these are new seeds, like I said, so they should germinate. I just bought them this winter. Um, and it doesn't really matter where you buy your seeds. These, this particular brand came from Baker Creek. And that's just because that's the only place I could find that had quite a few dwarf varieties that I was wanting or looking for. All right, so basically, 
Since it's only an eighth of an inch, you're just going to tap those little seeds in there, maybe kind of disturb the soil a little bit and roll it around, but you're really just going to kind of tap them in there. Make sure you don't get the seed stuck to your finger. You don't want to remove the seed. Now, if both seeds germinate in this pot, I'll let them get, you know, pretty good tall, both of them, if they both come up. And really, I'll just either put the extras out in the garden or give to a friend or whatever just pinch them off if I have to but I would rather not I don't want to waste a, a plant all right so we got our soil in our pots we got our seeds in there this is the most important step right here. Label them. <laughs> Make sure you label what you put in your pot. We got six pots here. And we got a red Sharpie. Let me see if I can find a black Sharpie right quick. Sharpie. So we just planted the orange hat tomatoes. You can find these little tags like this uh, on Amazon. Uh, you might even find them in some of the stores. Um, I like getting them off of Amazon because they sent me a pretty nice little box of them with different colors so you can kind of color code if you want, which I thought was neat. Yeah, and just stick them in there. That way you know what you grew. Either that or you're going to be playing the guessing game. Some people like to, you know, maybe put what you put in there and then like write the date on the back. So that's a good idea. And that's a good idea because they should sprout in 7 to 14 days. So that way you can kind of keep an eye on when these guys should be coming up. Um, I've already got some space on the shelving over here to put these guys. I got some there at the top and down here. Um, and I'll show you those guys here in just a second, what we got going over there. So that's it. You just pop the seed in the little cup, make sure you label it, and we're just going to move them right over here to our shelving. Um, stick it right in there. Oh, there we go. 
Um, let's see. We got the grow lots up here. We got the tray I was showing you earlier. And underneath this tray is a heating pad. A, well, not a heating pad, but a seed starting mat that warms up. Um, and we actually put a layer of cardboard between the bottom of the shelf and the uh, seed starting mat just so it can retain its heat a little better. Um, these shelves have holes down in the bottom so we want to make sure that we're not wasting our heat here. And I've got uh, the Cape Gooseberries. Some people know these as the um, ground cherries. Um, I got a lot of spices going on here. This basil and the sage. Um, had to restart my chives. They did not come up. I might have some bad seed. I don't know. Down here is all flowers. Um, got some balsam, hollyhock, which I'm really excited about because it's a black one. It's going to look great. Uh, some poppies. Um, a lot of butterfly flower. We got a perennial garden that we're trying to get started. Um, I did some calendula this morning. Uh, he's a cold weather flower. Um, when he pops up, it might, we, can, we can put him out before our last frost date. He likes the cold weather. Um, and just some lettuce down there that doesn't look the greatest, but it's still kind of green. I don't know if you can see it. There it goes. And then I have another, oh, here's the heat mat, so you can see the heat mat. Um, here's what we're using. Um, you can see on there it tells you that it roots the rooting area to improve the germination and rooting. So, there you go. Um, that's really all there is to it. You just get you some seeds, some dirt, get you a little setup going on here. Um, like I said, once these guys get big enough, like these flowers are definitely big enough to go to the greenhouse now. Um, we just need to get it prepared and situated out there for it. Uh, right now, like I said, it's really cold with the ice that we just got, but they'll definitely start going outside because we need to start some peppers and tomatoes for sure. All right, thanks for hanging out with me today. Until next time. Hey guys, this is several days later, but I wanted to go ahead and show y'all. Most of our tomato seeds had germinated. Um, some are even getting their um, true leaves in, the second set of leaves. Um, but yeah, they're all doing well. We started these tomato seeds, I believe it was February 24th, and today is March the 5th, it's what, eight, nine days? Um, I remember the seed packet was saying um, seven to fourteen days. For these seedlings to emerge so it's not even been the full 14 yet so there they are they look good they look healthy um they're growing these guys are kind of stretching for the light um some have not come up yet, while others are doing very well. But yeah, I just wanted to show y'all how quick and fast these tomato seedlings have popped up. Alright you guys, we will catch you on the next one.